Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you uh, live to talk about the four game DFS slate for League of Legends. Um, actually, it, it's an interesting slate. I think there will be more people that are going to play um, in the tournament t tonight um, because of that uh, DK DraftKings uh, promos uh, for Micro Millions. I believe the $4. GPP contest is included in that promo. So I, I'm sure we're, we're going to have a, a few more people that are joining us in that tournament. Um, but so I think that's, you know, that's good. I think we're going to have more uh, people that are playing. So hopefully that, you know, is a good news for us as long as we have good takes, right? So speaking of good takes, I'm going to dive in. Um, it's a two game in China and two gamer in LCK um, in China that are there's you know some are close games uh at least from the Vegas odds standpoint it's gonna be Invictus Gaming versus Edward Gaming IG versus EDG um and then uh TES Top Esports versus BLG Billy Billy Gaming um notably from the roster standpoint um Icon is starting for BLG in the mid lane over Fofo I know Fofo has been struggling a bit but I do not think this is an upgrade because Icon has been, in my, <clears throat> in my opinion, one of the washed up players in the past couple of years, um, at least. I know when he played for OMG, I did not like him, um, his performance. So unless he changed this whole, you know, play skills and play style around this off season for some reason, um, I do not see this as an, this as an upgrade. So for that reason, um, and then all, the fact that BLG has shown some very inconsistencies over the past couple of weeks now, I guess, um, I am pretty confident that Top Esports will take the series. Um, I think it's going to be two to zero, um, but I've seen Dalgo and Weiwei carry a team before, and I've seen Top Esports obviously similarly make some bad decisions, you know, in games as well. I know Jackie Love, you know, played well against IG in their previous series, um, but against his former team, I think he was very motivated. And these are the spots where Jackie Love could be doing Jackie Love things where he could struggle um, or just show, you know, uh, be a little bit um, overzealous and, you know, make some uh, bad mistakes. Um, but I think... Um, just with confidence that they're playing with, I think, uh, top esports and against Icon, I think Knight has been in better form lately. So I think top esports should win this. Um, I know Ben is still trying to get used to the new lineup here at BLG after being traded from RNG. Um, but I think there are a lot more inconsistent inconsistencies and, and factors that are have been against BLG's uh, winning chances, I think. So I think for that reason, I'm going to have to go with top esports two to one or two to zero. Two to zero is probably more likely, but then I, I can definitely see two to one, like I said, because of Dalgo and Weiwei. The other Chinese game is IG against EDG, I guess, like I said. Um, well, first of all, top esports is favored um, for that earlier game that I talked about. And then EDG is even a bigger favorite over IG. Um, I know EDG has been kind of rounding out in form, uh, especially Scout and Viper. And then JJ has been a solid jungler. But going up against June at IG, I mean, IG has been pretty good as well. Um, I know Yukai is now starting in the mid lane. Uh, and Wink and Le Shin Liu, who, you know, I think used to be called Lucas. So, I mean... That bottom lane does not scare me at all. So I think that's going to be the biggest difference in my opinion. And then as long as JJ against June, I think that goes okay in favor of EDG. I think that should be pretty good. And I know Scout does not really feed the lane. So I'm not too scared of June and Yukai because I think if IG, if you are making an IG stack for GPP purposes, June and Yukai are probably the top two priorities that you want to target. Um, but for EDG, I think... They're going to settle down here against IG. I think they, they have been playing better lately, like I said. Um, Flandre Zika, I think, is more of a wash. But JJ, as long as he does okay around the map and creates map pressure and, you know, in favor of his, uh, of his teammates and their lanes, respectively, I think EDG should win this maybe two to one. I think IG tends to show up when they're least expected to win. Um, but EDG... 
you know, I think has been, like I said, pretty, pretty much better lately. So I think in the bottom lane is going to be the big difference that I think uh, will favor EDG's chances to win. Yeah, and, and these two, both two Chinese matches should be pretty high in kills, in my opinion. I know EDG tends to play a little bit slower, but I playing against IG should help. And then top esports BLG, which I think will be the probably the bloodiest matchup on the slate. So I that's that's probably why top esports is my favorite. Um, but then that also gives us the leverage on BLG if you think BLG is, can pull this off with Icon in the mid lane. But I, I I just I'm just not a believer, huge believer in Icon, and I don't think that's an upgrade for BLG, and especially when you bring in another mid laner i know they probably practice and scrim all the time uh but at, at a competitive in a competitive match first game back i mean that's going to be a huge ask to go up against knight and then with their teammates and the lack of synergy and all that so i think that's another factor that favors top esports lck um it's pretty it's pretty straightforward in my opinion um at least from the dfs standpoint every time you have fred and brian on the slate I fade that matchup, regardless of who it is. Um, Freddie Breon, uh, Freddie Breon plays tends to play very, very slow. Um, and here, actually, Freddie Breon in the summer split so far has been pretty bad. Um, KT actually has been really, really good. They feel and they feel like they're they've been really good, and they feel like they're playing really well as well because Arya has been starting in the mid lane. Whereas Vicla, um, B I C L A, he has been uh, he played in the spring split, as you know, who replaced Arya, but Arya has been playing really well. That they actually decided to drop um, Vicla um, from KT's uh, starting roster for this week. So that tells me KT is fully, um, you know, committed to playing Arya in the mid lane. And then in the bottom lane, aiming and life has been playing, have been playing really well as well. So I'm a little worried about Rascal and Cuz because they haven't been as good as the other his other uh, their other teammates. But against Breon, against Umti and Morgan, I'm not hugely concerned about KT's chances to win. I think KT should win this series, but but then like I said, for DFS purposes, I'm not I'm not you know fond of this matchup because of the lack of kill upside because they play so slow, especially Fred and Breon. I do want to see if KT Roaster plays uh, a little bit faster. Maybe that will bring up the uh, CKPM, the combined kills per minute uh, metric that I like to look at. But let's see what that looks like here um, for the summer split so far. I know KT has played a few games at least um, here in the summer split, as, as you see here, KT 0.65. So that's pretty slow. And then you see Breon 0 0.40. That's like... I think that may be the lowest CKPM amongst all four regions, LPL, LCK, LC, LEC, and LCS. I think 4.40 is really bad. And as you see, they're one of the two teams that haven't won a single game uh, in the split so far, along with Nongshim Red Force. So I do think even though KT is one and four, um, they've been playing better than Freon. I think KT should win that matchup. And that's why they're favored by not very much, but I think the odds should be bigger in my opinion. All right, Gen G versus DK, Damon Kia. Um, that's the probably the prime marquee matchup of the week for the LCK, in my opinion. The top two, top three teams, Gen G and DK, going at it against each other, especially after Damon Kia brought on Nuguri or brought back Nuguri in the top lane. Uh, for Damon Kia, you know, and, you know, I think they will round out in form and they'll play better and finish in top three um, in the LCK and make the playoffs uh, after all at the end of the split. But right now, Damon Kia really hasn't been playing well, in my, in my opinion, from at least from the eye test. I mean, like, I think Damon Kia had some scares here and there, uh, in my opinion. I know Canyon has been playing pretty well. I know they're both four and zero, but I just feel like, Gen G also having played this roster together, like their the roster having played together for a while for the entire duration of the spring split, I think will help a lot against a you know good opponent like Dawan Kia. Um, I just am not a huge believer in Duck Dom and Kellen. I think Ruler and Lehens are, you know, they like they are better 
first of all, and then they like to make more plays, uh, which is very critical in this meta, I think. It's a very AD carry favorite meta, important position here. Um, and I don't think, I mean, Canyon has been playing really well as, you know, uh, actually Canyon has not been playing as well as he did in the spring split. Um, that scares me a little bit. Um, so I think that actually favors Peanut, who's been playing much better this split, I think. Um, so I, I have to go with uh, Gen G. And Chobi, I think, hasn't, hasn't, has not recorded a single death in the, in the LCK. Um, I'm a huge LCK fanatic, and everybody's been talking about how awesome Chobi has been this first, these first couple weeks. Um, Chobi has been, or first week, Chobi has been really good. Uh, I think going against Showmaker, I think I think I think he will do well as well. Um, and with Nuguri um, in the fold, I think Damon Kia actually has been playing a little bit slower. Um, yeah, so 0.52. So I'm not fond of this game as well. I think this is going to be a slower match of at least one of the two or three games in the series. <clears throat> I think well, it's going to be um, a very slow matchup at least, like maybe 10 to 5 or 11 to 6 or something like that. I can definitely see that happening because of Damon Kia now having Nuguri back in the top lane. And I know that that like when Damon Kia used to have Nuguri starting for them, they tended to play really slow. Um, so I think they are going back to that old days. And, you know, you saw Dawan Kia in the historical matchup in the first week where they they recorded their first kill after 30 plus minutes or something like that, something ridiculous. Uh, you know, it was like a record, uh, you know, the latest kill recorded ever or something like that um, in the LCK. Um, and then I think that game, Damon Kia finished the game. They won the game. <laughs> Even though they won, they lost. I mean, they, they won 3-0 to zero in the kill count. I mean, that's like a nightmare from the DFS standpoint. Um, you Your whole team stack, whatever team you stack, ends up with a win 3-0. I mean, I think... You know, if you have a team, that one key a team, I think that's fine. But if you have players from that, you know, game, I think where it ends ended 3-0, that's really bad. So I'm not expecting that to be the same, but I do think one of the games in this series will be low now with Nuguri in the top lane. And they both, the both teams know how big of a match this is um, in terms of like measuring in terms of like, you know, using this game as a measuring stick uh, for their skills and where their team is at. So I do think um, that's going to be lower in kill upside, and this is going to be lower in kill upside. So really, I mean, today I would target both LPL teams, uh, games, I mean, um, where I do think top esports should win this one, and then EDG. So, um, you know, maybe for cash, I would say, I would definitely consider top esports, EDG, and then KT. So two of those three, I would probably like to stack them for cash. And then for GPP, really any LPL team is in play, including IG and BLG. Um, I do think they have a pretty good shot at upsetting their respective opponents. Um, but at the same time, in the LCK, Dawan Kia can definitely pull this off against Gen.G if they hit all their cylinders. Um, against Gen G, but I do think Gen G will win at the end of the day. That's my prediction. And then here, I do think KT is going to win, but do not play Fred and Brian. Okay. Do not play Fred and Brian. At least that should make your build land line build up uh, process much easier because even if Brian wins, I mean, if you've watched my videos previously, even when Brian, Brian wins, they're not going to score well for DFS purposes. I think the last time they were in an optimal lineup was like some, I, mean, I think that happened maybe once or twice in the last split. So that tells me that, you know, I think probably, you know, probability wise, I think it's better to fade Fred and Brian there. But anyway, yeah, so that's all I got for you guys today. Um, if you, for prize, pick, for, for prize picks, I, I think for the kill count, uh, um, predictions and all that i think somebody asked me to maybe pick three or five players uh to see to you know kind of talk about my favorite plays here today um i, I think i mean the, i think the obvious pick would be knight here against icon um i know icon is washed up um so i do think knight actually having um 
reached that better form lately in the last series. Um, I do like Knight here over the kills. And then um, where is Mark? Oh, yeah, Mark. Here in the bottom lane, I do like Mark to go over the assist or whatever the kills plus assist uh, threshold is uh, for Mark, if that is even available. And then let me see. For EDG, I would say Wink and Chin Liu here, both of them, under whatever the kill threshold is, in my opinion. Viper and Mako are very, it's a they're a very smart duo in the bottom lane, and they do they do not give up a lot of kills against their opponents, especially in the bottom lane. So I would definitely go under Wink and Shin Liu under the kills or and then kills plus assists if that's even a possibility. And then in the LCK, if you are interested, I would definitely go. I think I'll stay away from the Gen GDK because I don't really know what's gonna happen in terms of the kill upside. But here I would say Freon, Lava, go under um, the kill threshold here because Arya has been in really good form lately. Like, like I said, that forced the team to drop Vikla from the starting roster. So going up against Lava, I think Arya um, is going to do well. And give. Up. he's not the type of player that feeds or gives up a lot of deaths. So I would definitely have to favor Lava um, under the kills uh for brian today yeah that's all i got for you guys today if you guys like the video please hit the like button and subscribe button um, but if you guys want to chat or if you guys have any questions or have any suggestions uh, for this these kind of videos um, please uh, send me a message on discord youtube um, or on twitter at dfs chan um, this is uh, sponsored by True DFS, um, so I, I appreciate them, and I appreciate you guys, and good luck out there, and yeah, hopefully you guys take one down. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.